Hi, my name is Kristen. This is Kristen Craze Books. So I really could not believe that I am here with my last, most anticipated book release video of the year. The time has flown by. I think I've done this every month except for maybe January and February of this year because I only started making videos late January and I have loved doing these. People seem to like watching them. It's so much fun for me to find what's new and coming out every month and put them together and share the ones I'm interested in with you all. And my list for next year is already over 100 books. But I'm going to film a video of my top 10 2022 releases that I'm excited for. So to narrow that down, it's going to be interesting. But look out for that really soon. And I also just want to say, I got these. These came out today. I'm filming November 29th. And these Tim Biebs just came out at Tim Hortons. And it's a Tim Hortons and Justin Bieber collab. So who knew? There's three flavors in here, I think. I just tried the ch chocolate chip sour cream. Delicious. So I just thought that was fun. But... Normally, December is not a huge release month for books, but this year it seems to be. There are quite a few that I'm interested in, especially on December 7th. We have a few festive ones in here, which is great because I've really been reading mostly holiday books so far in November. Christmas for me starts November 1st. I'm Canadian, so we've already had Thanksgiving in October, so November, November 1st, I'm geared up and ready to go. So I got a few festive ones in here, and then just a lot of books that sound really interesting, so let's dive into it. So starting with December 7th, the first one I'm really excited about is Beasts of a Little Land and this is by Juya Kim. And this is, seems to be a sweeping historical fiction story which is something that I really like. And the opening paragraph on the synopsis says, An epic story of love, war, and redemption set against the backdrop of the Korean independence movement following the intertwined fates of a young girl sold to a courtesan school and the penniless son of a hunter. So I'm getting kind of homegoing vibes from this. I've read a lot of these sweeping historical fictions that take place over centuries or we're following one or two characters and their story and how they connect, but I don't think I've ever read one in Korea, set in Korea, and this is set in 1917, and the cover's fantastic. I haven't read a really great historical fiction in a while, and I really do love them, so I want to prioritize this one. I haven't heard too much about it, but I think it's going to be fantastic harrowing and one that has potential to be a favorite of the year if I get to it this year. I think a lot of us like thrillers near the end of the year. They're fun to get through, quick and easy. You can get your good read scroll that way. And I don't like to do a lot of deep reading near the end of the year, but this one sounds really compelling. It is called 48 Hours to Kill by Andrew Burrell. And this is following an inmate who's getting has furlough for a funeral for his sister's death. And he's gonna spend that 48 hours and he is free to avenge his sister's death and kill her murderer. So I think it just takes place over the course of that 48 hours. I have realized after reading Razor Blade Tears that I love crime fiction where there's revenge involved, where you're finding yourself conflicted and really kind of cheering on the murderer or the would-be murderer. So I'm excited to see how that one plays out and I know that the earlier reviews have already been fantastic. Much like how I love sweeping historical Fictions. I also love slice of life stories and this one sounds right up my alley and it's called Tell Me How to Be my, by Neil Patel and this is following a mother and a son and the father has passed away a year ago and both of them are holding on resentments and I think they come together to pack up the family home and they have conversations, important conversations, but they still all have secrets. There's lots of family secrets in here. And the wife is wondering if she made a mistake in marrying her husband 35 years ago, I think. The son has secrets in his own life, and I'm sure this is going to be beautiful. I'm hoping that we have a happy ending, but who knows. But I haven't read a slice of life story like this in a while, and this one sounds fantastic. Now for the first festive book on this list, and the one that I will be reading December 7th, the day it comes out. It looks adorable, and this is Action Anthology, and it's called Amore Actually, so obviously this is a nod to Love Actually. And it takes place on Christmas Eve, and there's some fantastic authors in here. I want to shout out a few. Zoe Castile, Alexis Daria, who's one of my favorites, Adriana Herrera. So like some incredible authors in this collection. And it's all different love stories set around Christmas Eve. So if that doesn't sell you on it, I don't know what will. Now that I'm thinking about it, do I save it for Christmas Eve? That might be a good idea. I'm not sure how many pages it is. But that might be a good book to save and actually read on Christmas Eve. So I might just do that. How cute is this cover? Cannot wait. Now this next one is one I'm a little conflicted about and I will look for reviews before I decide if I want to read it. But I'm intrigued and it's called If This Gets Out and it's by Sophie Gonzalez. And 
Gail Deirdrick and honestly this just sounds like a One Direction retelling where two of the characters have secretly, two of the members of the boy band secretly have a romance, hence the title if this gets out. So I'm wondering if it's a One Direction like fan fiction or inspired by that. But I've heard good things about Sophie Gonzalez writing. So I'm curious and I will have to look for reviews on that one because I'm not sure but I'm definitely intrigued by it. This next one just looks adorable and it's not normally what I read this time of year. I'm not really into vampire stories and ghost stories in December but I think I will make an exception for this one and it is The Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling and this is obviously a sapphic romance between a vampire and somebody who can touch somebody and know how and when they're going to die. So that's all I know about this one. I, the cover is adorable. It really does sound haunting and atmospheric and sweet. So that is one I will probably get to in January. I've been wanting to read something by Cher Earnshaw for years. I know that many people love The Wicked Deep, but I le believe that this book is her first adult fiction book and I'm so excited about it. And it's called The History of Wild Places. The cover is what caught my eye at first because it looks like an ink blot and I think that's interesting and obviously you can tell right away that this is going to be a haunting story. And what I know about this one is that it's set in a small town that's very haunted and I think there's two timelines. The first one follows a character who is always hired to investigate missing person cases and while he is investigating Maggie who has gone missing in this town, he also goes missing and then we jump years later where somebody else is investigating the original guy's investigator's disappearance. So that's a little bit confusing but I think it can be really fantastic. This cover intrigues me right away. I think the earlier reviews for this have already been stellar and I know that Shay Arnsha is going to be a writer that I'm going to like. I just have a feeling that her writing is going to be for me. So we have two for December 14th and the first one I believe is festive, at least the cover is. And this is Homecoming Kings by Penny Reed. And I know Penny Reed is such a popular author and many people love, I think it's called the Winston Brothers series. I'll put the covers here because I think you'll recognize them. I've never read that, but I know so many people love that series so much. But this book intrigues me. One, because the cover looks festive. It looks like a sweater. I think that's adorable. And two, it seems to be second trans romance. I think our main character, he is one of those guys that... The next person his ex-girlfriend's dates is the person they end up married. What's that movie called? The Good Luck Chuck with um, Dane Cook, that kind of trope, which I think is kind of fun. So obviously this is a romance. I think it could be adorable and I'm hoping it's a series as well. I'm sensing a theme in all the books I'm talking about because the covers are really what caught my eye for all of these and that is definitely the case for Love Con by Cerecia Glass. Come on, this cover is fantastic. The pink draw my eye, I love the illustrations on it. And the tagline, I want to read it to you, says, All is fair and love and cosplay. So I know there are a lot of cosplay romances out there and I haven't read any, but I'm intrigued by this one. And it says he's cosplaying as her boyfriend, but their feelings for each other are real in this romantic comedy. So fake dating, cosplay, gonna be adorable. I'm into it. I'm all about romance right now. I think I'll probably get to this one very, very soon. Now just a couple more for December 28th and that is all I got for you. So the first one is The Spanish Daughter by Lorena Hughes which is definitely historical fiction. You can tell by the cover. These kind of covers don't often catch my eye but I'm intrigued by the premise of this one and I know that we're following a main character who inherits a chocolatier business. So that's all I need to know about that. That sounds intriguing but I think she's going through her family history and discovering some things that she probably is not too happy with. And I believe she go boards a ship and her husband is murdered on the ship but she was supposed to be the one that was killed and she decides to pretend to be her husband. She dresses up as her husband to, in order to survive and then digs into the past of her family and why she would be a target for murder. So there's a bit of a mystery in there as well. I'm looking forward to it. And the last one might be the one that I'm most excited about. It's called The Midnight Girls and this is by Alicia. Jansinska and the tagline says two rivals one heart and a kingdom ready to watch them burn So I mean if that doesn't catch you right away, I don't know what will this is a YA fantasy standalone Which I always appreciate and from what I have heard it is a sapphic enemies to lover story Which is fun and I know that there are actual monsters in this and I read a few reviews and they say the monster element is perfection And there's so many books about monsters that I want to love that I just cannot get into so I have high high hopes for this one so 
those are all the books that are coming out in December that I'm excited about. I'm sure I missed them, so please let me know down below and I look forward to my top 10 most anticipated 2022 releases because I gotta start thinking about that soon. And I have a few festive videos coming up for you. I filmed a tour of the tree behind me. I'm going to film a video right now about books to read if you like Hallmark Christmas movies. So that's all coming to you really soon. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.